Hello and welcome to Physiology Open. For this video, have a look at this question. In this question, there are two statements. First statement is an assertion and the second statement is the reason for the first statement. Now, you have to choose from the following five options. You can pause the screen and think about the answer. By the end of the video, we will see whether you got the right answer or not. Okay, so to solve the question, we need to know three things. First thing is pre-potential or pacemaker potential. Then what are G-protein coupled receptors? And how ANS affects both the above? We will see each of them one by one. So just a quick recap of pacemaker potential. We have discussed it in another video also. This graph is showing pacemaker potential. This is the potential of the autorhythmic cells that is SA node and AV node. X-axis represents time in milliseconds while Y-axis represents voltage in millivolt. The lowest voltage is known as maximum diastolic depolarization. HCN channels and T-type calcium channels are responsible for phase 4. This phase 4 is responsible for automaticity of nodal cells. Opening of L-type calcium channels and entry of calcium into the cells is responsible for phase 0 and opening of potassium channels and efflux of potassium from the cells is responsible for phase 3. Remember, all these channels are present on the membrane of nodal cells. Now let us see what are G-protein coupled receptors. On the membrane of the nodal cells are also present receptors for neurotransmitters which are released from sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. Sympathetic nerve releases noradrenaline and the receptor for noradrenaline on the membrane is beta 1 receptor. On the other hand, parasympathetic nerve releases acetylcholine and the receptor is muscarinic receptor of M2 type. Both these receptors are coupled with certain proteins known as G proteins. These alpha, beta, gamma which you see are subunits of G proteins. This G alpha which you see is of two types. G alpha S where S stands for stimulatory and G alpha I where I stands for inhibitory. The G protein associated with beta 1 receptor is S type that is the stimulatory type and that with M receptor is of inhibitory type. So the term stimulatory and inhibitory obviously means that they may stimulate or inhibit something respectively. Actually, there is a protein adenylcyclase attached on the membrane. GS activates this adenylcyclase leading to formation of more CAMP while GI inhibits it. Alright, now let us combine the information and see how autonomic nervous system affects the heart rate. See, when there is stimulation of sympathetic system, the released noradrenaline binds with this beta 1 receptor. Due to this, G alpha S gets activated and it causes activation of adenylcyclase, which in turn leads to formation of CAMP. These HCN channels, which are responsible for prepotential, their opening and closing is affected by the concentration of CAMP inside the cells. The name of this HCN channel is hyperpolarization gated cyclic nucleotide. So, the CAMP is a cyclic nucleotide. When CMP increases, the probability of opening of these channels increases. So, in short, sympathetic activation leads to more opening of HCN channels, causing more entry of sodium inside the cells, leading to faster change in the potential towards threshold. That means there is a change in this slope of the prepotential which becomes steeper. And due to this, SA node generates more number of impulses in the same time, hence it increases heart rate. On the other hand, parasympathetic activation has an opposite effect. Acetylcholine released from vagus causes activation of GI type of proteins which inhibits adenylcyclase, leading to decreased production of CMP. Thus, it leads to decreased opening of HCN channels and also T-type calcium channels. So, obviously, less sodium ions and less calcium ions will be able to enter the cells, leading to decrease in the slope of the potential. So what it will cause? It will result in the decrease in the number of impulses generated and hence decreased heart rate. 
Now parasympathetic activation has one more effect. It delays the closure of these potassium channels which are responsible for phase 3. So more potassium moves out which leads to hyperpolarization that is more negative maximum diastolic potential. See since it is more negative now the voltage change required to reach to the threshold is more. So it will take more time. In summary sympathetic activation increases heart rate by increasing the probability of opening of HCN channels and hence increasing the slope of prepotential while parasympathetic leads to more negative maximum diastolic depolarization and decreased slope of the prepotential. So with this let us now come back to our original question. Assertion says parasympathetic stimulation decreases the heart rate by decreasing the slope of the prepotential. Yes, this is a correct statement, right? Reason statement says stimulatory G proteins coupled to muscarinic receptors increase the opening of HCN channels. Well, this is a wrong statement since muscarinic receptors are associated with inhibitory G proteins which decrease the opening of HCN channels. So our answer is third option. A is true but R is false. Okay, thanks for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open.